we are going to start with our daily current affairs all right so as you know this these lectures are basically based on uh, the current affairs which we are covering from the two national newspapers the hindu and indian express you can also read these two national newspapers for your preparation of the civil services examination right and uh, you can supplement your preparation with the help of these lectures these lectures are uploaded on the youtube on the day to day basis so you can subscribe our channel on the youtube for that purpose all right so let's begin with the lecture okay so first news about mg narega mg narega means mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act 2005 which was passed by the parliament of our country okay the main purpose of passing this mg narega is to provide the right to work right which is also a socialist principle now recently what is happening is that there is various governing structure or governing mechanism for the mg narega in the states now recently the center has asked the states to split the payments right the payment that will be provided to the workers which are working under mg narega right so here there will be the center has recommended or center has asked the states to split out those payments based on the categories or based on the specified category for example these payments will be now be given right to the scheduled cars to the scheduled drive as well as to the others so this payment of these bases will be based on these separate categories right so it will be categorization of these you know the wage payment that will be provided to the workers under mg narega act okay so here the government of india already decided to provide a separate budget heads these separate budget heads would be given to the people or to the workers which belongs to the scheduled caste which belong to the scheduled drive categories separately so this there will be separate budget head right for the mg narega workers which belongs to the scheduled caste and scheduled drive categories under mg narega and that will be starting from the financial year 2021-22 and and by following this one right the government has asked the state to split out this base payment as per you know uh, the categorization or as per the categories that is scheduled caste and scheduled drive so that this type of budgetary provision would also be applicable to the states also okay now regarding mg narega as i told you that mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act and or mg narega was passed in 2005 okay and uh, it was basically you know uh, passed by the parliament of india so it is a indian labor law and social security measure right that aims to provide some sort of a guarantee to the right to work in the indian context so it was it was initiated with the objective of enhancing you know livelihood security in the rural areas by providing at least at least 100 days of guaranteed wage employment in a financial year right to every household whose adult members you know uh, would want to do some sort of a volunteer to do unskilled manual work in the in the rural footage itself the another aim of mg narega you can say that to create some sort of a durable assets like durable durable assets like you know uh, the roads canals ponds wells that are all there in the rural areas itself so here the employment for that adult person who is willing to work in this you know unskilled manual work would be provided within 5 years of or sorry within 5 kilometers of you know the worker's uh, uh, residence right and uh, if uh, that that you know if that work is not provided within 15 days okay then applicant will be entitled also to get some sort of an employment allowances under mg narega and this mg narega related works is impl implemented by mostly by gram panchayats only okay so this is a brief background about mg narega so here the existing existing systems of the wages that has been provided until now okay it is simply on the one type that is not have any sort of a categorization of this payment of the wages so there was no category wise provision of the pay, wage payments now there will be category category wise of payment category wise provision of the wage payment for the workers which are working under mg narega various you know workers right advocates have have claimed that this type of debate this type of division right which is based on the categories right or categorization of the workers based on sc st for the purpose of the payment of the wages right would basically you know complicate the process and would further you know reduce the amount of you know uh, the funding that would be provided under mg narega over the period of the time in the future also okay so here you could see the women which are the mg narega workers which are working in the rural setting okay next the model tenancy act the model tenancy tenancy act is basically have been recently the union cabinet has approved this model tenancy act right and now it has been circulated to all the states and the unitary unitary territories to get their opinion right 
so to get their you know uh, the, the opinion about this model tenancy act and based on that you know the fresh legislation or any sort of amendment would would be provided under model tenancy act and that will be subsequently passed in the parliament right as as a form of the amendment act so here the model tenancy act what we are talking about is basically you know redefine the relationship between the tenant and and your landlord so here it would basically smoothen out you know a uh, more harmonious relationship between the tenants and the landlords by clearly delineating delineating their obligations towards each other okay so here in the rural in the in the urban settings you have you know the tenants which are residing generally on the on the rents right and the landlords are you know uh, they are also you know getting some problems because of some tenants and sometimes the tenants are also getting problem from the landlords right there may be situation on either way okay so smooth on this process this model tenancy act was basically circulated to the states to elicit their opinion about this uh, amendment procedure that will be taken subsequently by the parliament for the purpose so it will definitely overhaul the legal framework that will be provided to rental housing across our country okay so here that act is basically expected to give flip to the participation of the rental housing specifically as a part of the business model okay where you have a lot of huge you know housing shortage in our country specifically in the urban setting okay so it will provide a model for the for the urban properties as well as for the rural properties okay and it will also definitely provide the urban template or the model template for the residential and the commercial property also and it will try to boost right the private participation specifically in the rental housing in that manner okay and here in case of dispute between landlord and a tenant there is obvious some dispute may arise between the landlord and a tenants right there will be a rent authority right or there will be a rent court right this rent court and rent authority would be there for the speedy resolution of any sort of a dispute that will be arising between the landlord and the tenants under this model tenancy act okay and here right as you know uh, all of you would have uh, you know stay on the rent so here under model tenancy act you know the tenant would have to pay the security deposit for the two months right so it is a compulsory deposit of the two months that have to be paid by the tenant to to the landlords for the purpose of residential premises okay for the purpose of commercial property the tenants will have to pay the six months rent that is in advance that is a security deposit that will be you know refunded back to you know uh, or returned back to the tenants as soon as the tenant basically leaves the house right here you know uh, if the tenant is you know uh, you know if the tenant you know fail to vacate right uh, the property which belongs to the landlord what will happen on the expiration of the period of the tenancy right there will be separately you know uh, a well defined documentation which provides you the period for the tenancy that means the period for the tenancy means the period for which you are you are eligible to stay in particular house okay after that you have to vacate or you have to renew your uh, you know that uh, the tenancy certificate for that purpose okay and if the tenant continue to stay in the in the premises after expiration of the tenancy or the termination of the expect of, of the tenancy what will happen the landlord is entitled to have the double the monthly month rent that means for the next two months if the tenant continue to reside after you know the tenancy period is expired or the termination of the tenancy anything can occur okay the tenants will have to pay the double the monthly rent for the next two months to the landlord okay that is for the next two months and for the remaining other months right the rent would be four times the rent would be four times that means from the third month right after expiration of the tenancy the tenant has to pay the four times the rent to the landlord if the tenant do not vacate the premise on the expiration of the period okay and here the for the landlord obligation the landlord would have to give at least right the notice in the writing of the three months before revising any sort of the rent right so here the notice has to be given to the tenant for the purpose of revising the tenant, you know the rent at least in the three months in advance okay and that purpose in the in the in the meanwhile right in the middle of the tenure or in the middle of the period of the tenancy the landlord cannot hike the rent for the premises specifically with respect to the tenant okay next you have the flying training academies the flying training acad academies so india or government of india has decided to set up the eight new flying training academies under 
the liberalizing flying training organization policy which was adopted by the government of india right under the airports of authority of india so here the academies will be set up at five places right so these are the five airports the belagavi airport jalgaon the kalaburgi khajurao and lilawari right so here all these eight flying training academies will be set up under this five airports so here it will set up you know these eight flying training you know organizations that makes the india as a global flying training hub because nowadays what is happening is that for the purpose of taking you know any sort of a flying training type of you know the activity the cadet has to go to the foreign you know uh, the countries for the purpose of the training so there will be exodus for the indian cadet specifically for the for the purpose of getting the training under the flying under the flying right so here with the setup of these flying training academies the indian cadets would would not have to require to go to the outside country for the purpose of this training and as well as the indian you know uh, indians will have also the capacity to train some of the flying cadets right which belongs to the outside the country also right so some of the foreign cadets will also be trained under that so here the eight new flying training academies will be set up in the five airports okay these five five airports i told you that the belagavi and your kalaburadi right this kalaburadi both are located in karnataka both are located in karnataka right jalgaon as you know it is located in the maharashtra okay and khajurao khajurao is a famous tourist spot also the khajurao right uh, it is located in the madhya pradesh and lilawari the lilawari is also the famous the airport in assam okay so here the flying training academies will be set up over there and it and these airports are carefully chosen right for the purpose of the minimal disruption due to the weather issues or any sort of a civil or military air traffic for the purpose okay so here to make this flying training organizations you know attractive to the bidders right various other provisions had also been ad adopted by the government of india right so here the flying training organizations right would be designed as will be designed to cater the flying training requirement of the cadets in india's neighboring countries for example the bangladesh right the myanmar you know pakistan afghanistan their flying their flying cadets will also be trained in this flying training organization or flying training academies okay in order to attract the bidders specifically for the purpose of the flying training organizations right the airport authority of india have also reduced the minimum annual renting this minimum annual renting that will be provided to uh, by the by those bidders specifically for the purpose of making this flying training organization right so it will be reduced to 15 lakh okay that will be annual renting that will be provided by this bidder okay now this concept royalty of the airport royalty was also scrapped to make this venture business friendly because this is a new entirely a new uh, setup in the form of the flying training organizations which will be set up within premises of the you know the airports so definitely you will have you will have to attract the bidders for that purpose for the setting up of this flying training organization and for that purpose you will have to scrap all sort of airport royalty that have to be paid to the to the airport authority of india as well as to the minimum annual renting that will have to be provided because such flying training organization would be occupying you know the area the, the significant area which were previously you know belongs to the airport authority of india so definitely the airport authority of india would be eligible to get some minimum annual renting from the the flying training organization so both you know uh, you know this uh, the airport royalty as well as this annual renting both have significantly been reduced okay for the purpose of you know uh, setting up of this flying training organization in the five airports in our country okay next the shanghai corporation organization as you know that shanghai corporation organization is basically a intergovernmental international organization okay now now uh, recently what happens is in that the agreement was signed in june 2019 okay the agreement was related to you know the cooperation in the field of mass media right this was the agreement that was signed between the member states right the member states which belongs to the shanghai corporation organizations okay now recently the union cabinet has have ratified or has approved this cop this mou or this agreement which was signed between the member states right that was known as the cooperation in the field of mass media right so that means now india has ratified that means the india is you know uh, legally bound 
with that respect of you know the agreement which was related to the cooperation in the field of mass media so as i told you that shanghai cooperation organization is an intergovernmental international organization okay it is the eurasian political economic and security alliance okay and it was established in 2001 right okay now what we are talking about this mass media and what type of agreement it is see mass media that is basically the term that means the technology that is intended to reach to the mass audience that is what is term is mass media so here technologically you are intended to reach the mass audience okay now how would you reach to the mass audience so definitely to the primary through the means of communication to to reach to the vast majority of the general public right the most common platform that would be used for the mass media like you have the newspapers okay you have the magazines you have radio you have television even the internet also right they are all the part of the mass media so this agreement is all about this okay now regarding the shanghai corporation organization the head of the state council basically is the supreme decision making body of the shanghai corporation organization this heads of the state council basically meets at least once in a year okay it adopt the decision right and also the guidelines on the important matters of the organization so it is supreme decision making organization right it has two permanent bodies or this organization the shanghai corporation organization has two permanent bodies the first is the shanghai corporation organization secretariat it will work it will basically you know work the secretariat you know or it will provide you know secretariat you know uh, the assistance to the shanghai corporation organization so it will be situated in the beijing in the china the second is the executive committee of the regional anti terrorist structure that is called rats this executive committee is basically located in tashkent so this executive committee that we are talking is related to the execution of those aspects which are related to you know the anti terrorist related activity so here the regional anti terrorist structure is basically headquartered in the tashkent tashkent is basically in uzbekistan uzbekistan okay now is a permanent organ of the shanghai corporation organization which serve to promote the cooperation of the members member states which belong to the shanghai corporation organization against you know uh, the evil that is the terrorism separatism and extremism so it will basically you know so it is a platform where you know the member states basically you know cooperate in this evils specifically the terrorism separatism and extremism okay so there will be a cooperation for the purpose of removal of these evils from the selected countries or from the member countries so here currently you have the eight member states of the shanghai corporation organization india kazakhstan china kyrgyzstan pakistan russia tajikistan and uzbek uzbekistan there are four observer states also the afghanistan belarus iran and mongolia right fine so here you could have the member states so first of all the russian federation the republic of kazakhstan kyrgyzstan okay uzbekistan tajikistan india then pakistan and china these are the eight permanent countries except or sorry apart from that you have the four observer countries also okay. next you have the india cycles for change as you know that because of the covid 19 because of the covid 19 related pandemic right the cycling the cycling that you know that the paddling of the cycle okay that has gained the momentum specifically in the indian cities so here under smart city mission a challenge was launched the challenge is known as the india cycles for change cycles for change that means nowadays in the urban cities specifically in the urban areas okay the people are more oriented towards the cycling for the purpose of the health benefits as well as for the purpose of the short to the medium you know uh, the travel they are not you know uh, uh, using their motor vehicles or bicycles sorry the motorcycles or the cars for the purpose of short and medium travel but rather they are more accustomed they are, they are more adapting towards the cycling as cycle they are using the cycles for the purpose of the travel so here the challenge was launched under the smart city mission by the ministry of housing and the urban affairs on 25th of june 2020 right it is definitely as the response to the covid-19 pandemic so here the smart city mission that we are talking i think everybody would have 
heard about the smart city mission right it is a urban renewal and retrofitting program right which are uh, implemented by the government of india the mission is to develop the smart cities across the countries okay you know uh, by making them a city friendly and uh, sustainable in the future so here the purpose of the smart city you know smart city mission is to drive the economic growth and to improve the quality of the life of the people definitely how would you how would you improve the quality of the life of the people by enabling the local area development as well as by harnessing the technology right specifically that type of technology that leads to the smart outcomes right specifically to those people who are residing over there so here the covid-19 pandemic has brought the great opportunity to the people specifically to the urban cities right across the countries now the cycling saw a huge rise huge rise trend specifically in the demand so the lockdown restrictions have significantly you know affected the commuters now these commuters are now resorted to the cycling specifically for the purpose of the travel for the short and medium distances rather than just depending on you know uh, you know uh, the the vehicles right or the public you know commuters or public transport for the purpose the cycling also seen is important you know the means for staying the healthy also because nowadays the sedentary lifestyle lockdown restrictions unable to move out from the homes right all has led to you know the physical and mental agony across the people right among the people right definitely by confining themselves in in the homes in the home premises so definitely the cycling is one of the way where you can basically chill out outside you know, uh, in in the in the in outside the locality so here in the backdrop of this pandemic the challenge that is india cycle for challenge was basically launched under the smart city mission right it was basically launched in the 107 cities which are registered to be part of the cycling revolution okay and here the 41 cities have already undertook this initiative under the cycles for the change for the purpose of the adoption of the new habit that is cycle for the purpose of staying safety staying healthy as well as for the purpose of the commuting for the for the shorter and medium distance for example in some of the western countries the people resort to the cycling okay if they have to travel for the shorter distance rather than just by taking you know their motor bikes or the cars for the purpose so definitely some of those initiative which are undertook by the 41 cities like conducting the surveys discussions on the cycling you know pop up cycling lanes specifically dedicated cycling lanes right which is absent in our country is safe safer neighborhood because the cycling is very very important you know if you have proper dedicated lanes the people would be more you know uh, uh, promoted or more encouraged to do the cycling or to take the cycling right you need to have some sort of open street events the cycling rallies for the purpose the online campaigns all such things have started in the cities right for the purpose of the promotion of the cycling so here the smart city mission is in basically association with the institute of transport and the development policy conducted very various training modules for the purpose of the capacity building right under this 107 cities for the purpose of this cycling initiative which is under implemented under smart city mission okay next the seed mini kit program seed mini kit program right what is this mini kit mini kit is just like a you know a packet or just like a you know box just like a box where some sort of a seeds will be there okay so it's a mini kit it is not something like you know a a bag but it is a simple a mini kit which is consisting of a seed now here right you have the union minister of the agriculture right you know uh, have recently uh, started the seed mini kit program the seed and the seed mini kit program right the seed mini kits or the higher yielding varieties of the seeds right specifically the pulses in the oil seeds will be distributed free of cost to the farmers free of cost to the farmers okay so here the seed mini kits program right is a made a tool specifically in the hands of you know the government to uh, to enable the farmers to basically you know to cultivate this high yielding varieties of the seeds or to cultivate this high yielding varieties of the crops specifically the pulses and oil seeds and thereby it will also increase the yield right the productivity of the farms as well as it will also help in seed replacement rate also or it will help in also the seed replacement in that manner so here this seed mini kit program right that was implemented in the backdrop of the pulse and the oil seed that are in the pressing need because india is heavily dependent on the pulse and the oil seeds for their domestic production even 
the oil is basically imported by the india from the various countries okay so if you give if i give you the small background for that purpose for example in, from since the year 2020 2014-15 okay there have been you know almost a renewed focus on increasing the production of the pulse and the oil seeds specifically in the indian context since 2014-15 okay now this oil seed production have increased almost almost to 36 0.57 million tons that is the recent stats you know given by the ministry of agriculture in 2020-2021 right at that point of the time when this program was launched or when the renewed focus was, was basically there at that time the production of this oil seeds right uh, uh, that we are talking was only 27.51 million tons that was there right in the figure of 2014 and 15 now you can now you can understand that in that years from 27.51 million tons to have increased to the 36.57 million tons i'm talking talking with, with respect to the oil seeds in the similar case if you see the pulses if you see the pulses the pulses in 2020 21 the pulses combinedly all pulses was basically having the 25.56 million tons that was the production of the pulses all pulses it was there just 17.15 million tons in 2014 and 15. So definitely with this, you know, uh, high yielding varieties of those seeds have led to, you know, the increase in the production productivity of the pulses, specifically increased from 17 million tons to, you know, 25 million tons. You can understand is that and also in the oil seeds from 27 million tons to the 36 million tons. So definitely it is basically, you know, uh, giving so much benefit to the farmers as well as to the economy for that purpose. So here, the trends specifically in the area that we are talking, uh, you know, is positive. The trends in terms of the production and the productivity all are positive with respect to the pulses, with respect to the oil seeds, right? And here, the mini kit program is would become a major tool, right, for increasing these new varieties of the seeds, specifically in the fields. And definitely that will, you know, uh, replace the older seeds over the period of the time. So here the mini kits will be provided by the central agencies like the National Seed Corporation, the NAFED, the Gujarat State Seed Corporation to the farmers, right, which is fully funded by the government of India's entities. Now here already 20 lakh 27,318 seeds mini kit of the pulses have been distributed to the farmers. That is almost 10 times more than the last year that has been distributed as a pulse mini seeds right and here almost 8 lakhs so i mean you know seed mini kits have also been distributed under this program as well as 74000 ground groundnut mini mini kits or groundnut seed mini kits have been distributed across the country to the farmers that is been distributed you know free of cost and some of these varieties are basically the high yielding varieties for the purpose of increasing productivity production from these oil seeds and the pulses in our country all right next the long period average here the long period average that we are talking about is basically you know uh, uh, is a basically in the average of the rainfall that has been received over 50 years uh, you know period so here that 50 year period that we are counting from 1951 to 2001 so recently the indian meteorological department have said that the monsoonal rains specifically in the month of june to september this is basically the southwest monsoon this is basically the southwest monsoon so under the southwest monsoon or the monsoonal rain that is from june to september right the long period average was is basically have would be 101 percent of or the rainfall would be 101 percent of the long period average of the 88 centimeter that means the rainfall would be good the rainfall would be good or you can say that the, it will be a normal rainfall because here the 101 percent of the long period average as per the definition of the indian meteorological department that shows that you know if that long period average of the rainfall that we are talking if it is between 96 to 104 percentage right it will be called as a normal monsoon it will be called as a normal monsoon okay so here as per you know the imd's definition if the rainfall is 101 percentage of the long period average right uh, if that is uh, in between of 96 to 104 so definitely 101 percentage in between 96 to 104 so that means this year the rainfall would be normal previously on april 16 
the Indian Meteorological Department says that the rainfall will be 98% of the long period average. So previously the IMD statement was that it was 98%, just 98% of the long period average. So what is this 98% according to the IMD definition? So according to the IMD definition, if that is in between 98%, that is also considered as a normal because it is also in between 96 to 104. But now it is said that it will be somewhat higher. It will be somewhat higher. And I told you that the long period average is the average of the rainfall, average of the rainfall. And this average of the rainfall, we are taking the 50 years period, the 50 years period from 1951 to 2001. So here the long period average is basically the average of the rainfall that has been received over 50 years and the average comes out for this 50 years that is 89 centimeters of the rainfall. Okay. Now we are specifically considering the southwestern monsoon that is from the June to September for the purpose of calculating this 50 years period or for the purpose of calculating this long period average, right, which has been also the most important assessment criteria adopted by the Indian Meteorological Department. So here the IMD maintains the five rainfall distribution categories, all India scale level. That is if the rainfall is in the excess, you can say that, you know, the long period average or the rainfall is 110% or more of the long period average. If the rainfall is above normal, you can say that the rainfall is between 104 to 110 percent of the long period average. If the rainfall is normal, right, the rainfall is around 96 to 104 percentage of the long period average. If the rainfall is below normal, the rainfall is between 90 to 96 percent of the long period average. If the rainfall is deficient somewhere, that means the rainfall is almost less than 90 percent of the long period average. So this is just an assessment criteria which was adopted by the Indian Meteorological Department. Definitely it is based on the scientific criteria, it is not based on the arbitrary criteria. Okay. Next, the Bal Swaraj. Okay. So the Bal Swaraj is basically a portal which was uh, which was basically created by the National Commission for the Protection of the Child Right, which is a basically the statutory body which was which was set up uh, you know, uh, by the act of the parliament, uh, definitely by the government of India for the purpose of the safeguarding the rights and the protection of the child, right, child rights. So here the National Commission for the Protection of the Child Rights created an online tracking portal. This online tracking portal is known as the Bal Suraj portal. This will basically monitor, you know, the tracking of the children specifically which are in the need, right. So here, According to the Bal Swaraj portal, right, as of the May 29, 2020, 2021, nearly 10,000 children in the country are in the immediate need of care and the protection. As you know that because of the COVID-19 pandemic, right, uh, the parents, the single parent or both of the parents of, the, of that first of the children have been died because of the COVID-19 pandemic, right. So there are many children which are in the age of 0 to 17 years of the age, right, they have become orphaned or they have been just abandoned during this COVID-19 pandemic because of their parents have died or because of the, they are missing, right, because of the COVID-19 pandemic. So, so this uh, this portal that we are talking about, Wall Swaraj portal is created by the National Commission for the Protection of the Child Rights. Right? Definitely, it has been created, right, as the National Commission for the Protection of the Child Rights is basically a statutory body, right. It has the mandate for the purpose of the monitoring authority, right. It has the purpose, it has the mandate to monitor the children specifically across the country. So for the purpose of fulfilling its mandate, the National Commission for the Protection of the Child Rights have created this, you know, this wall storage, wall storage tracking portal for the children of, you know, uh, uh, which are in the age of, you know, 0 to 18 years of the age. And it has been set up, right, under section 109 of the Juvenile Justice Act 2050, right, definitely. Uh, it is basically, you know, uh, the problem has become more compounded because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And here uh, that we are talking about this Juvenile Justice Act. The Juvenile Justice Act is basically passed by the Parliament of India in 2015. In 2015, it was basically an amendment act that was passed in 2015. So here, the juvenile in the Indian context is basically a, a child, right, uh, you know, who is below the age of 18 years of the age. Okay. And in the Indian Penal Code, you know, the child cannot be charged for any crime until the child the child becomes the seven years of the age, right? But you can understand that the children which are in the seven years to the eighteen years, right? These children are increasingly become more criminal, or they are increasingly they are come in the conflict with the law. Okay, come in the conflict with the law. So here the Act consolidate and amend the laws which are related to the children which are allegedly and found to be the conflict with the law. And the children, such children are in the need of care and the protection, you know, uh, by catering to their basic needs through, you know, some sort of a proper care, protection, uh, the development treatment, as well as the social reintegration of those children which are in the conflict with the law, okay, that we have, that we call them as a juvenile, okay. 
the objective of this portal is definitely to track online and the real time monitoring of the children right who have lost their parents or both of their parents due to the covid 19 right and such children are, are are badly needed for the purpose of the care and the protection under section 214 of the juvenile justice act 2004 2015 right here the purpose of this you know this portal is first of all to track down such children right which are affected because of covid 19 right and then such children will be produced before the child welfare committees and there the children will be restored right to their parents to the guardian to their relatives and subsequently the follow up process will be taken up okay and the data will be filled by in the portal by the district officers or the state officers right for the purpose of every child that will be tracked and subsequently reintegrated with those family or guardians or the relative for the purpose next the national human rights commission as you know the national human rights commission is basically a statutory body it has been set up in 2015 sorry in 1993 okay by passing the national human rights commission act 1993 so it was passed by the parliament of india in 1993 itself so it is a statutory body it is a statutory body and is passed by the act of the parliament in 1993 all right so here the recently president ramnath kovin have appointed justice arun kumar mishra who was the retired justice of the you know of the supreme court as a chair person of the national human rights commission okay here uh, the committee or the high power high power selection committee basically selected or recommended this name of the justice arun kumar mishra to to the basically to the president for the purpose of appointment so here this high power committee or high power selection panel right which basically recommend the names for the purpose of the appointment as the chair person of the national human rights commission consisting of the prime minister narendra modi as a chair person then union home minister then deputy chair person of the rajya sabha then lok sabha speaker and the leader of opposition in the rajya sabha this is basically consisting of a high power selection selection panel okay as i told you that national human rights commission was established in 1993 right it is definitely in the conformity with the paris principles which were adopted by the world by the world countries during the paris principle there was international workshop and almost all you know the national institutions which are mandated for the purpose of protection of the protection of the human rights in the individual countries basically participated in this workshop that was held in the paris and they then such national institutions which are mandated for the for the purpose of the protection of the human rights adopted this paris principles and subsequently the countries countries adopted this paris principles for the purpose of setting up of this national statutory bodies for the purpose of the protection of this human rights in the individual countries so here definitely is a statutory you know body because it is set up by the act of the parliament right that is human rights protection of the human rights act 1993 and definitely it is amended in 2006 it is headquartered in new delhi okay so here you know the functions of the national human rights commission is basically to take the so motto so motto ka matlab hota hai by its own that means without even complaint right just by looking at you know uh, the reports from the newspapers radio or any sort of a mass media communication channels right uh, the nhrc can somato can take the cognizance of any sort of a human rights violation or any sort of a petition right petition means just filing an application before the concerned authority in the nhrc right regarding some sort of a violation of those human rights so here the national human rights commission would have the power to investigate the violation of the human rights for the purpose right if there is a failure of the states or any other you know agencies with respect to the human rights violation okay and commission would also take you know some sort of a research about the human rights and also conduct the you know some sort of awareness campaigns through various various channels through various mediums right and it will also have the association with the ngos right it will also work with the ngos for the purpose of encouragement of the human rights across the country right it is currently consisting of the chair person and four full time members it will also have the four deemed members okay and uh, recently this act have been amended and now this as per the amendment act the chair person should be either the chief justice of india or retired chief justice of india or the retired judge of supreme court for the purpose okay the appointment is definitely done by the president of our country okay the chairperson and member of nhrc are appointed by the president okay but the recommendations which was done by a selection of the committee that committee will be consisting of the prime minister who is considered as a chairperson of this selection committee or high power selection committee for the purpose of recommendation then the second member is home minister third member is the leader of opposition in the lok sabha that is the lower house definitely the leader of opposition in the rajya sabha definitely the rajya sabha is considered as the upper house okay then the speaker of the lok sabha lok sabha that is considered as a lower house and the deputy chair person of rajya sabha you must understand the chair person of the rajya sabha is not a member of this high power selection committee 
okay so here the person is justice arun kumar mishra who have been recently been appointed as a chairperson of national human rights commission okay next the school boards as you know that recently the 12th examinations belongs 12th examination that has to be conducted right uh, you know belongs to the central board of uh, secondary education as well as the council board indian school certificate examination have been recently been cancelled right it has been decided by the government of india to cancel that 11th to cancel this 12th you know board examination across the country due to the covid 19 pandemic so here let us understand about the central board of secondary education the central board of secondary education is basically a board of education for the public and the private schools that means you will have the public and the private schools which are affiliated with the central board of secondary education right definitely under the union government of india right and here the board functions under overall supervision of a secretary which is been you know with the ministry of education government of india so secretary school education and the literacy the ministry of education government of india is overall a controlling authority for the purpose of the board functions for the central board of secondary education regarding second the indian school certificate examination right the indian school certificate examination or uh, the sorry the council for indian school certificate examination okay it is basically you know as a privately held the national level board you know it is privately held the national you know level board of school education school education definitely in india that conducts the indian certificate of the secondary education as well as the indian school certificate examination for for class 10th as well as for class 12th respectively so you can say that the indian certificate of secondary education that is the name which is given for the class 10th examination as well as the indian school certificate examination that is for the class 12th both are conducted by this you know the council for indian school certificate examination which is nothing but a privately held the national level board of the schools government of sorry uh, with india okay now historical background about this uh, the board of secondary education so first of all in the initially there was a up board of the high school right as well as the intermediate education was first set up as a first board that was set up in 1921 right it will have its jurisdiction over the rajputana central india and gwalior subsequently the rajputana you know uh, have become a separate board so here in 1929 the indian government have set up a joint board in 1929 for the purpose of the areas right and that that have been named as a board of high uh, board of high school and intermediate edu education rajputana under this board of high school and intermediate education rajputana right it included several areas like ajmer marwada central india and gwalior specifically the area which belongs to the madhya pradesh right as well as area which belongs to the rajasthan because ajmer and the marwada area basically belongs to the rajasthan and the central india which basically covers you know the madhya pradesh chatisgarh and these areas as well as the gwalior area okay in 1952 as soon as the country became independent the constitution of the board was basically amended okay now here there was some set of a categorization of the states that was belongs to the parsi and part d category territories of parsi or part d states right so here the board was given its present name at that point of the time to give its you know uh, the renewed mandate for the purpose of you know conducting this examination across the country so this renewed name that is central board of the secondary education was given at that point of the time so it was in the year 1962 that finally the board was reconstituted to expand its you know the 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 functions across the country for the purpose of conducting the, the board examination for 10th and the as well as for the 12th okay so here the narendra modi you can see the tweet right that we have taken the decision that is the student friendly definitely to cancel the examination for the purpose i right? definitely to safeguard you know the health as well as you know the future of our youths and here the priyanka gandhi wadra also congru congratulates the class 12 students specifically for making their voice heard right because various people including the including the you know children were basically you know demanding for the purpose of this cancelling of this 12th examination even arvind kejriwal that is the delhi chief minister also he was also glad to inform that the 12th class examination have been cancelled right and now uh, the delhi chief minister was also worried about the health of health of the children which were studying the class 12th examination had it been these examinations their health would have could be at the stake okay so it was a good decision to cancel this 12th board examination okay so that's all for today thank you very much be at your be at your home be safe and definitely we'll meet tomorrow so thank you very much take care of yourself